This is Kenneth Curran of the Los Angeles Times, and this is my DVD Pick of the Week. Alfred Hitchcock didn't become the master of suspense overnight. He worked at it for years and years and years. And now the people at the Criterion Collection have put out two of his films in their wonderful editions, filled with extras, the kind of stuff you see nowhere else. The earliest of the films is 1927. It's The Lodger. It's one of Hitchcock's first thrillers. It stars Ivor Novello as a young man who has a room in a boarding house, and he may or may not be a fearsome killer. You have to see the film to find out. The other film from 13 years later is Hitchcock just getting into his prime. The year is 1940. The film is Rebecca. It stars Joan Fontaine as a young bride married to the dashing Laurence Olivier. She goes with him to his ancestral home and things start to get really strange. Uh, this is from a novel by Daphne du Maurier. She wrote the great romantic thrillers of the day. This is really Hitchcock coming into his own, doing things the way he became famous for. No, stop! What the devil are you shouting about? Who are you? What are you staring at? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stare, but I, I only thought... Oh, you did it. Well, what are you doing here? I was only walking. Well, get on with your walking. Don't hang about here screaming.
I'll never come to Monte Carlo out of season again. Not a single well-known personality in the hotel. Stone cold. Wait up. Gasson, call him. Tell him to get me some... Why, it's Max de Winter. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Edith Van Hopper. It's so nice to run into you here, just when I was beginning to despair of finding any old friends here in Monte. But do sit down and have some coffee. Mr. DeWitter's having some coffee with me. Go and ask the stupid waiter for another cup. I'm afraid I must contradict you. You shall both have coffee with me. Gasson, let me see. Coffee, please. Cigarette? No, thank you. You know, I recognized you just as soon as you came in, though I haven't seen you since that night at the casino at Palm Beach. <laughs> Perhaps you don't remember an old woman like me. Are you playing the tables much here at Monte? No, I'm afraid that sort of thing ceased to amuse me years ago. I can well understand that. As for me, if I had a home like Manderley, I should certainly never come to Monte. I hear it's one of the biggest places in that part of the country, and you just can't beat it for beauty. And what do you think of Monte Carlo? Or don't you think of it at all? Oh, well, well, I think it's rather artificial. She's spoiled, Mr. DeWitter. That's her trouble. Most girls will give their eyes for a chance to see Monte. Wouldn't that rather defeat the purpose? Now that we've found each other again, I hope I shall see something of you. You must come and have a drink in my suite. I hope they've given you a good room. The place is empty, so if you're uncomfortable, mind you, make a fuss. Your valet is unpacked for you, I suppose. I'm afraid I don't possess one. Perhaps you'd like to do it for me. Well, I... <laughs> I hardly think... Uh, perhaps you could make yourself useful to Mr. DeWitt if he wants anything done. You're a capable child in many ways. That's a charming suggestion, but I'm afraid I cling to the old motto. He travels fastest who travels alone. Perhaps you've not heard of it. Good night. What do you make of that? Do you suppose that sudden departure was intended to be funny? Come, don't sit there gawking. Let's go upstairs. Have you got the key? Yes, Miss Van Hopper. I remember when I was younger, there was a well-known writer who used to dart down the back way whenever he saw me coming. I suppose he was in love with me and wasn't quite sure of himself. Well, c'est la vie. By the way, my dear, don't think that I mean to be unkind, but you were just a teeny weeny bit forward with Mr. De Winter. Your effort to enter the conversation quite embarrassed me, and I'm sure it did him. Men loathe that sort of thing. Oh, come, don't suck. After all, I am responsible for your behavior here. Perhaps he didn't notice it. Poor thing. I suppose he just can't get over his wife's death. They say he simply adored her. <laughs> 